All right, questions for Marcus. Aaron Fentress, right here. Marcus, you grew up a big Dallas Cowboys fan. Are you at all extra geeked up to play in the stadium? Definitely. Um, you know, looking forward to it. Um, you know, I was a part of the, the team that played LSU there. Um, I went there as a red shirt. Um, but to be able to play in, uh, in the stadium will be a lot of fun. Tyson Alger, middle. Marcus, there seems like there's been a couple games this year where it's maybe taken you a couple series to really kind of dial in your throws. Um, maybe kind of, I think Florida, against Florida State, you were overthrowing a little bit. When, when you come back to the sideline, is it something where you just calibrate yourself or is there a coach that comes and talks to you or how does that kind of process work for you? Uh, just for me, it's just to refocus. Um, you know, you, you tend to miss some throws sometimes. Um, but for me, it's just continue to, to have the same uh, – mentality and um, you know don't really let it uh, bother me Gary Horowitz all right yeah we'll tag you here okay a lot of your teammates have been uh, saying that you have made them a better player just by how you've carried yourself on the field in practices etc what does it mean to you when you hear statements like that um, first off it's nice of them to say that um, you know, means a lot, and um, you know, I think that's really the goal of, of our team is, is try to be the best uh, teammate that you can be, and um, you know, for them to say that uh, means a lot. Chantel, right here. Marcus, you have fewer festivities and activities this week than you did for the Rose Bowl. Going into that, are you sort of grateful to be in Eugene and have more of a normal week despite the game being that much more important? Uh, yes, of course. It's it's always nice to kind of you know be in a a familiar setting. So um, for us, it's it's nice to be back in Eugene. Um, you know, I'm, you know, for us, it's it's a it's really just taking it like a normal week, like a normal away game. Um, so it's it's nice to have that for sure. Front left, Steve. Marcus, you talked before the Heisman about how winning that was a dream of yours. I mean, in the same way, when you were a little kid, did you grow up dreaming of winning a national championship in college? Of course. Um, you know, I'd trade the Heisman to win this. Um, it means a lot more to me than, um, you know, the Heisman, and no disrespect. But, yeah, I mean, just means a lot more because it's a team effort. And, um, you know, it's it's something that, as a team, we really strived for, we really worked for. And um, now that we're a part of it, um, we're excited and, you know, just looking forward to it. Jerry. Hey Marcus, do you remember watching Oregon play Auburn in the national championship? Uh, what are your memories of that? And also, have you watched any of Ohio State at any time just to watch on TV this year rather than, you know, going through game film preparation? Um, that The Auburn game, um, you know, I was in high school. Actually, me and a few buddies, um, we got excused from school to watch the game. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, but it kind of a long story short, the power went out in my house. So we had to like go all over the place to find the game. Um, then we finally did. We got it. We got, we were able to finally catch the game about the second half. And, um, you know, to see that, um, to watch Oregon play and, and, you know, unfortunately lose it. I mean, it's, it's tough, but, um, you know, it's, it's fun to watch that game. And, um, you know, now that we're back in that picture, um, you know, it's just exciting. Um, and for Ohio State, I mean, I, I haven't been able to watch them too much um, uh, other than just watching the film. But, um, you know, they seem like a great team, a well-coached team, and very disciplined. So we'll have to be, you know, geared up and, and ready to go. Front right, Ryan. Hey, Marcus, uh, did you enroll in any classes at UO this semester? I'm actually going to talk to my advisor. Um, there's several things that I have to do, but, you know, I, I'm going to try to see if I can get into some classes. Back middle. Marcus, being from Dallas, I was just curious about, you know, growing up in Hawaii, what was the connection to the Cowboys? I mean, I think you were four the last time they they won a Super Bowl, so there's been not some not so great football in that time. What was it that made you a Cowboys fan? The first kind of game that I ever remember watching as a kid <clears throat> was the Washington Redskins versus the Cowboys, and the Cowboys won. So um, from ever since then, that, that was kind of my team. And, um, you know, Growing up, it I mean went through some some tough years, but you know it's it's been a been a good year this this far, and it's fun to watch them. On the left, Austin. 
Marcus uh, Hirona said that the season has gone on so long that he actually had to move out of his apartment and move into a hotel. Um, <laughs> did you have to do anything like that? And have you gone to visit him in his hotel? I, ha I have not been able to see the hotel yet. I heard it's a, a pretty cool deal. Um, it's like a little apartment. Uh, but I, I'm actually good. I, I have a lease that I'm a part of um, that I'm still in. So I'm, I'm not too worried about all that. Jake? Marcus, we talked to a lot of the guys who are redshirt seniors who are redshirting during the <clears throat> national title game, and they said they didn't think it would take them this long to get back to the national championship game. They kind of thought it'd be a frequent thing. As a senior in high school, when you were sitting there watching, knowing you'd come here, did you think it would take four years to get back, or did you think when you became a duck, you guys would, would be there every year, every other year? Uh, uh, that's tough to say. Um, you know, I, I think... <clears throat> the amount of work and preparation um, that it takes to, to get this far, um, it's tough. I mean, you got to have a lot of things go the, the right way. So um, obviously, I mean, we, we had expectations. We wanted to be a part of the game every year. Um, you know, it's kind of a team goal. Um, but now that we're in it, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a disappointment that it's been this long. But, I mean, you'd, I think for us, it just it shows how long it, it takes and, you know, how hard it is to get there. And, um you know, now, it's, now that we're a part of it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Gary Horowitz. Marcus, I know you haven't seen too much of Ohio State yet, but you've been starting here for three years. Could you put yourself in the shoes of Cardell Jones for a moment and what that must be like for him to have gone, you know, this will only be his third start and what he's accomplished so far? I mean, for what he's been able to do is, is incredible. And, um, you know, I think a lot of that has to do with his coaches and, and how they prepare him and um, really his teammates. And, um, I think, you know, he's done a, a great job of leading those guys. And, um, you know, he seems to have all the confidence in the world, and that's what you got to have. And, um, you know, he's playing really good football. So, um, you know, our defense will have to be ready for that. Joseph Hoy. Back right, Marcus. Marcus, uh, trust the process has been kind of a buzzword phrase with a bunch of players this year. I was just wondering, um, not trying to get what the process entails, but how is it presented to you and why is it so easy to trust? The process is has a lot to do with our culture. Um, you know, we, you know, from being the next guy up to, um, you know, win the day to, to different things like that. Um, you know, that that's a part of our process. You know, everyone's process is a little different. Um, you know, it takes on a different role, I guess, in, in each individual's, uh, you know, daily life. But, you know, Coach Coach Harvard always talks about you know trusting. Um, each other, trusting, you know, win the day, trusting uh, the next man up, and really all those things together is the process. And um, if you trust that, you know, the coaches will put you in the right spots. Um, you know, Coach Rad will have you healthy and recovered. Um, the academic people will have you, you know, in, in the right spots for your academic reasons or your academic obligations. So um, that all of that is is really the process for us. And if we just, you know, trust what they trust, all the help that we get. You know, we'll be all right. Right here. A two-prong question, Marcus. When you score, you tap your chest and point to the air. Can you maybe walk us through the meaning of that, what that means to you? And also, um, has everyone, anyone ever doubted you, told you you, you weren't going to make it as a quarterback, and do you use that as fuel? Um, for your first question, um, I just tapped my heart three times, uh, just for my mom, my dad, my brother. Um, just something that I've done. Um, and, I mean... You know, everyone, everyone has, has people that doubt them, um, you know, people that don't believe that they can do it. Um, you know, I, I've had people, so I, I'm not going to name them specifically, but of course that's motivation. And, um, you know, any player, any competitive athlete will tell you that. Operator, we're going to go to the phones if there's any calls from the phone. Certainly. Your next question comes from the line of Warren Williamson. Oregon Duck Football News. Um, curious, go back to when you were a redshirt freshman and even uh, two years ago. Did uh, did you ever have thoughts that you would be in this position? Of course, this has been an exceptional year for you, but maybe take us back. and um, What were your goals then, and do you feel that you've reached all of those goals, except for the national championship, of course? Yeah, um, every year that I've been here, uh, my goals and my mentality has been the same. Um, you know, I think that as an athlete, that competitive drive uh, makes you a better player. So, um, you know, now that we've accomplished several of these goals that we've had for, you know, quite a few years now, 
um, it does feel good, but, you know, we're looking forward to, to the next one and hopefully accomplishing that goal. And, um, you know, that's, that's, it's been a long road, but, um, you know, you just got to, again, trust the process and, and um, you know, enjoy all these moments. Any more, operator? And your next question comes from a lot of Todd Jones. Hey, Marcus, Todd Jones from the Columbus Dispatch. Can you just tell us a little about what it's like to play for uh, Coach Alfred, what it is about his personality and his approach to practices and, and getting you guys ready, what it is that you players are related to so well? Uh, Coach Alfred is, is really just somebody that um, you love to play for. You know, he he develops that relationship with you uh, from the moment that you get here. It doesn't matter if you're, uh, you know, the starting offensive lineman or, or the, the scout team guy. I mean, he's he, he, he'll develop that relationship with you. And um, when you have that, you know, that compassion, you feel that compassion, um, you know, it makes you want to play that much harder for, for the guy. And, um, you know, he really just, for us, he, he motivates us in different ways. Um, but at the same time, he, he really just, um, you know, always tells us to trust the process and enjoy the moments. And, um, you know, for us, it's, it's awesome to play for, and um, we're grateful to have him as our coach. Still on the phones, anybody, operator? And you have another follow-up question from Tim May. Yeah, this is Tim May with the Columbus Dispatch. I was wondering, Marcus, uh, where's Freeman in particular? What is he... Has he surprised you a little bit by the way he stepped up this year? And what what does he bring to the attack? Who is Royce? Um, Royce has has been an incredible asset for us. Um, for him to be able to step up as a freshman and and come in and, and play as well as he has, um, you know, it's been really just an awesome deal. Um, you know, he's such a he's such a smart football player um, and such a freak athlete mm. that you know it really makes us that much better and. Um, you know, without him, it'd be tough to say, you know, where we'd be at as an offense. Any more, operator? Certainly. And your next question comes from the line of Greg Couch. Hi, this is Greg Couch at Bleacher Report. Um, I have two things. Um, how is Coach Alfred different than Coach Kelly in the way he treats, with, treats you, talks to you, uh, things like that? And also, how do you know when Coach Alfred is angry? How does he show it? Um, Coach Alfred uh, finds finds ways to, to make you laugh. He'll joke with you. Um, he'll find any little thing to, to kind of rub you and, and uh, make you laugh. So, um, you know, not saying that Coach, or Coach Kelly didn't do that, but Coach Alfred um, kind of has a knack to make, make funny jokes out of uh, different situations. Um, and, you know, you, you'll, you'll know when Coach Alfred is mad. Um, you know, he... He turns a little red sometimes, and um, his voice gets a little gets a little higher. But um, you know, I, I I think his his calmness and and the way he's able to kind of always stay, you know, pretty collected, um, you know, helps us as a team and, and helps us you know not be so up and down. Operator, thank you. More. And your next question comes from the line of Fred Lewis. <laughs> Marcus, uh, last year when you decided to return to Oregon, um, has, has this gone the way you had hoped it always, or is this, is this the way you had imagined it? Uh, it's it's been incredible. This this year has been awesome. It's been worth you know every second of it. Um, you know, I, I it'd be tough to say that I didn't you know hope for these things. Um, you know, I really wanted to be a part of something special, and uh, this team is is special, and I'm thankful for it. And um, you know, it's been such an awesome journey and, and, you know, it's just been great. Operator, one more. Thank you. And there are no more audio questions at this time. All right. A couple more in the room. You talked about, um, Royce Freeman and his impact, but, you know, talk about Tyner and his, and his return to the Rose Bowl and how big it's going to be to have him back in the national championship game. I mean, when you have uh, two great backs like Thomas and Royce, um, they really feed off of each other. So to have Thomas and uh, really at full health, you know, will we'll really make our offense that much more better. And um, you know, he's been he's been a great great asset for us, and uh, we're looking forward to big things out of him. Middle, Andrew, Marcus, Marcus, of all the weapons you guys have, I don't think many expected Evan Bayless to have as many catches as he did in the Rose Bowl after four all this season combined. 
how in the world did he get open so often? Or is he doing anything differently or schematically to get open? Or how did he have such a game like that? A lot of it had to do with our game plan. Um, you know, he, he found ways to get open. Um, he really, uh, you know, did a good job of finding some open, some open space in some of those zones, um, especially on, you know, some rollouts and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of it had to do with our, our scheme that, uh, that game. And, um, you know, for us, it's, it's awesome to see him step up and make plays like that. And, um, you know, he's, he's done a great job and we're looking forward to more out of him. Back middle. Marcus, what is it if there's anything out there that either people don't get or don't understand about your program or maybe a misconception out there about you guys? I don't know. That's tough to say. I, I uh, you know, people are going to have their opinions. Um, you know, we really don't focus on those things. Um, we really focus on each other and and um, find ways to get better as a as a team. Um, you know, people are always going to have their doubts. People are always going to say things like that. But for us, we just focus on on what's at hand and and uh, each other. Far right, Jake. Marcus, you guys were at such an emotional high on Thursday, uh, you know, winning the Rose Bowl on a podium, confetti falling. How have you personally been able to kind of come down from that and, and refocus? And at the team in general, uh, have the older guys had to kind of refocus everybody? No, I, I firmly believe that um, this team, we, you know, refocus based on the fact that, you know, we're part of the national championship. And this is something that... Um, you know, very few teams ever get to be a part of. And um, I think that quickly allowed us to, you know, kind of not really uh, ditch the, the ceremonies and, and the celebratory stuff like that, but it really helped us kind of refocus and, and make sure that we're on uh, the same path that's made us successful this year. So, um, you know, just being a part of this national championship game really helped us kind of, you know, regain our focus and, and get ready for it. Front row on the left, Gary. Marcus, you've had such balance with your receivers this year, and the last two games especially, the Rose Bowl, Darren Carrington really stepped up. Can you talk about what he's met in his growth this season? I mean, every, I mean, all those guys. Um, and I think it really honestly starts with, with Keenan Lowe. Um, you know, Keenan taught a lot of these guys, you know, what they're doing out there on the field. And, um, you know, they all look to him as, as their leader. And D.C. really kind of, kind of fed off that, and, and so many other guys did as well. Um, but I mean, DC really has has come a long way, um, not only as a as a football player but as a person. And um, you know, it's it's fun to watch. I think that's you know the coaches always talk about watching guys grow. And I think uh, to see DC from where he was at uh, in the beginning of the year to now, what he's been able to do, um, it's definitely just kind of an, an enjoyment to see. Gary over here on the right. Uh, segue by Keenan Lowe. Um, <clears throat> can you can you think back to your redshirt freshman year, the winter, Keenan Lowe? Saw you by yourself working out the recreation field to U of O, running 100-yard wind sprints up hills, doing fake handoffs by yourself. At least that's what he came home and told Grant Thompson. Uh, when you were doing that, can, were you thinking of the possibility of where you are now? Or was that, I mean, can you just kind of reflect on how much effort you put into getting where you are now? Yeah, I, you know, it takes a lot of hard work. Um, and, you know, I, I don't really have much to say about that. But, I mean, you know, I really wanted to be a part of this team. I wanted to contribute. And, um, you know, I wanted to find ways to, to get myself better. And um, whatever I could do, it didn't matter uh, whether it's running or, or doing, you know, play action passes or stuff like that. Um, you can always find ways to get better, even if it's by yourself. And, um, you know, I really took that to heart and um, wanted to just make an impact. And... Um, you know, it's kind of, it's nice to see it kind of pay off for sure. All right, I don't. One, one more right here. Thank you, Tiffany Eckert, KLCC NPR. Um, do you consider one of your lifetime achievements uh, meeting David Letterman two in the top ten? <laughs> and tell the truth, was he was he cool? Yeah, he was. He was awesome. Um, uh, to do the top ten was was a special time. Um, you know, that was a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, to meet Dave and, you know, he's kind of, I think he's, he'll be done pretty soon if I'm not mistaken. Um, so to be a part of that, to, to actually meet him and, and, uh, be a part of the top 10 was just a lot of fun and I enjoyed it. You read well. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Marcus. Thank you. Marcus, uh, one of our media, just to let you know, we'll have uh, media availability after practice the next couple of days. I know I have not sent out um, a list in terms of who's available. I've just gotten schedules. Let's do it in terms of send the request in by 6 o'clock. I'll respond if such and such isn't available so you'll know ahead of time and that sort of thing. So uh, there will be availability, again, with select players Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday will kind of...